Terminator 2 Judgment Day is an R-rated film featuring intense violence, nudity, and harsh language. It involves themes of preventing the deaths of 3 billion human lives by averting a nuclear war between mankind and the machines that they created, and it stars a mechanical assassin who was sent back from the future wearing a disguise of living human flesh with a mission to protect a 10-year-old boy from being murdered at the hands of a terrifying, shape-shifting killing machine. And because it was produced right here in the United States of America, we made a children's toy line out of it. And we loved it! Let's check it out. T2 came out in the summer of 1991, and by that fall news was already coming out that Kenner Toys had licensed the rights to make action figures based on the characters in the film. On this episode of T for Two, we're just going to be talking about the very first four action figures of Kenner's Terminator 2 toy line that were released just in time for Christmas of 1991. When this toy line was first released, your Uncle Casey was around seven years old, so this toy line based on killer robots from the future was catered perfectly to stupid kids like me. Aww. The first figure in the line is arguably the most iconic of the series. Power Arm Terminator, with Missile Launcher and Grabbing Claw. This is a classic 90s action figure. He sports the iconic half-man, half-cyborg look that was so popular at the time that the film was released. And his accessories are a ton of fun. He comes with three different interchangeable arms. First off is the standard human disguise looking arm, with of course a few chunks of flesh removed to show off his robotic endoskeleton underneath. It also has a fun little action feature with this hidden spike that you can deploy from his fist to, I don't know, fight guys with or as us kids used it for in the 90s, flipping each other off. His second arm was a fun little claw with which he grabbed things. You know, Terminators need to grab stuff, uh, like uh, Doritos or ladies' butts. <gasps> the third arm is probably the most popular, definitely the most badass, and that is the rocket launcher. That's right, he's got a goddamn rocket launcher on his arm, and it's huge. But I suppose since it's Arnold Schwarzenegger, He's strong enough to carry it around. It's spring-loaded, back when spring-loaded toys really had some firepower behind them. You could take somebody's eye out with this thing from across the room. And now it's lost in the shag carpeting, and Mom's going to vacuum it up, and it's going to be lost forever. This is arguably the most iconic, most quintessential figure of this toy line. When they would advertise the vehicles made for this toy line, they usually advertised them with this guy sitting in them. Bootleg toys made in other countries were usually copied off of this guy. Hit the subscribe button below so that you don't miss all of those topics when we talk about them in the future. Next up on the list is Battle Damage Terminator with blow open chest action. While this one may not be as iconic of a toy as Power Arm Terminator, it was probably my personal favorite. See, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I didn't like being pandered to. But, to cater to kids, toy companies thought that they had to make all kinds of colorful representations of characters in action figure form in ways that they never appeared on screen. So it wasn't very often that you got screen-accurate action figures. For example, I don't remember the Terminator ever wearing a burgundy t-shirt. So when I was a kid, I really liked this toy because it wasn't overly colorful or exaggerated like so many movie toys tended to be at the time. In fact, I liked to think of this as a representation of the Terminator when he was standing guard in the car repair garage while John and Sarah slept after the big escape from Pescadero. Even his accessory is pretty normal. He's pretty much the only figure in the entire Terminator 2 toy line with a realistic, normal-looking weapon. It's just a shotgun, which the Terminator actually did use in the film. So I loved this toy just as he was. But... He also came with a pretty fun little action feature. When you pull down on his right arm, the flesh would blast off of the front of his torso. I don't recall as a kid if this really served me a whole lot of purpose as far as playing with it because, you know, it doesn't really make sense for the Terminator to be walking along and then just suddenly, BAM, the flesh just pops away from the front half of his body. But it was still fun to play with because, you know, you could just pop it open and see the inner workings of the endoskeleton underneath. So that was always kind of fun. Anyway, which character came next in the series? Was it the T-1000? John Connor? Sarah Connor? Nope, it's another Terminator. But this particular Terminator toy is almost as iconic as Power Arm Terminator. It's the classic T-800 endoskeleton. The toy is officially called Techno Punch Terminator because toy companies think they have to blow everything out of proportion to get stupid kids to want to buy their merchandise. But no kids called this Techno Punch Terminator. It was just an endoskeleton, and we loved it! If you held it under a light, his eyes would glow red. How cool is that? He also had a pretty neat punching action, which is where he gets his name. Where did he 
All of that would have been awesome enough, but he also came with a few dumb accessories that hardly anyone ever used because they were just stupid and unnecessary, like this piece of goofy headwear. The instructions referred to it simply as a scope, but that doesn't really matter because it blocked his cool glowing eyes and it looked dumb, so nobody used it. The other accessory is this little piece of garbage that's described on the packaging only as wreckage. So basically he's just carrying a little piece of trash around to hit people with. I actually did use this accessory a little bit as a kid because I kind of thought of it as like that piece of pipe that Kyle Reese was bashing the Terminator with at the end of the first film. So like he just, I don't know, picked it up and took it with him and didn't get blown up. I don't know. But why these accessories? Kenner could have just skipped these, left them out, saved the money, and I don't think they would have lost a single sale. What kid cared about these two things? And, why did they choose to include these two things when they could have included a couple of phased plasma rifles like the Terminators were actually shown using during the future war at the beginning of the film? Any kid in 1991 would have chosen just one rifle over these two pieces of shit. Nonetheless, this was a great toy, and it's a fantastic example of what action figure collectors refer to as an army builder, because you can collect a whole bunch of them and have an army of endoskeletons to hunt down and annihilate the human race. The final figure released in this first wave is Blaster T-1000, with Rapid Deploy Missiles, based on the film's incredible villain portrayed by Robert Patrick. Unfortunately for us kids in the 90s, this figure looks absolutely nothing like Robert Patrick. It looks more like, I don't know, Lex Luger maybe? And unfortunately I don't have an open version to show, just this Mint on Card 1991 original. But that's not going to stop us from having the best show possible. So, while we're discussing the children's action figure line that was made for this R-rated film, here's a sneak peek at an upcoming episode of T for Two, where we're going to discuss another piece of merchandise, the Terminator 2 Fighting Knife. Yes, this was also an officially licensed product for Terminator 2 Judgment Day. God damn it, I love the 90s! Make sure to hit the subscribe button below so that you don't miss the episode where we discuss this bad boy. From sculpt to shelf, toy manufacturing can be a surprisingly long process, so my assumption is that because the toy line came out so soon after the movie was released, Kuroko just might not have been able to provide any good reference photos to Kenner in time for them to start working on the sculpt of the figure, so maybe Kenner just had to go off of a loose description. Or, since the guys at Kenner hadn't yet seen the movie, maybe they just had a hard time believing that a slender guy in a police uniform would come off as a convincing villain for an action figure line, so maybe they just had to take some liberties with the character design. I don't know. Nevertheless, this is what we got. Blaster T-1000. This is kind of fun for me because this is one of the action figures from this toy line that I actually never had as a kid. So this is my first time checking him out. According to the instructions, we raise his left arm to remove and discard a shipping pin, which looks like it's right here. I guess that's to keep him from flopping around all loosey-goosey in the package and looking bad. To swing missile launcher into firing position, raise right arm until it clicks. Oh, that's a hell of a click. Um, then rotate it forward to the waist. Oh, I see. And that flops up. Load launcher with two missiles, middle fin up. Boy, these are definitely more elaborate than your typical action figure instructions. To fire missiles, hold figure as shown, just with your hand, I guess. And A, strike with fingertips, or B, flick with finger. So, I guess like giving a baby CPR, we do some back thrusts. And he launches his missiles. That's, uh, pretty weak. Let's try it with flicking with our finger, see if that works any better. This is kind of lame. I'm not too disappointed that I didn't have this guy when I was a kid. Uh, figure can hold binoculars in his right hand. Oh, good, yeah. The the binoculars that he used throughout the movie. You know, he was uh, he was always searching for John Connor with his binoculars that don't quite reach his eyes.
He doesn't look anything like Robert Patrick. He's uh, pretty stiff in the body, and uh, his action feature kind of sucks. If nothing else, when I was a kid, I could see myself freezing a bowl of water just long enough to get that thin layer of ice across the top. Then I would take that thin layer of ice and smash this guy's head through it to recreate the scene where the T-1000 commandeers the police helicopter. Other than that, I honestly can't see a whole lot of legitimate play value in this guy. Then again, that could be because <clears throat> I'm in my 30s. He does have some funny looking little shorts though, I guess based on the way that his action feature is engineered. I suppose I could have had some fun with that as a kid. Terminator could have been coming in there making fun of him. Oh, look at you. Look at your stupid little shorts, you little swimming trunks. Putting on his claw so he could grab at him. Oh, look at you little swimming trunks. They're stupid. You look like an idiot. You don't even have an ass under there, do you? Raise your arm up and click it into place so that we can see your ass. Ah, there's not one there. Look at this. Look at this. There's no ass here. There's no ass. Get to the gym. Work your glutes. You baby. You shithead. Get out of here. Go on. Okay, so maybe there is some fun to be had with this guy. So there you have it, the first four figures from Kenner's Terminator 2 action figure line. We'll cover more of this series in future episodes of T for Two. And if you enjoyed this episode, please hit the thumbs up button below so that YouTube will know to share this video with more Terminator fans. This show is a growing baby, and it could use your support. And until next time... Ah, shit, I still haven't thought of a sign-off. Um... Always make sure to wear... Oh, hey, welcome back. After I finished this week's episode, I realized that I read the instructions wrong on this guy. Well, I read them right. I just didn't follow them right because I'm not too bright. You're supposed to put the binoculars in his right hand, and then he actually will hold them up to his eyes pretty well. It's still a pretty shitty toy. Bye.